What is up guys? Dashing here for episode 208 of Community Universe Mode and edition at number 41 of Monday Night Fusion, the fallout of the amazing pay-per-view that was Absolution. And now we continue on down the road to Ascendance and our final pit stop purgatory just two weeks away, ladies and gentlemen. What is up, Zach? We are kicking off tonight's card with some Vixens Tag Team action. I'm going to see Cassie Maverick, the Cowgirl, and Aura team up a very strange and unlikely alliance here as they take on Kitty Quinn Bell and last night's Vixens Mini Royal Rumble winner, Jade Devine, of course, accompanied by the man who is still our Anarchy Champion, Jacob Ziegler. But Jay Divine, man, probably with performance of the night, eliminating not one, not two, not three, not four, but all five of her opponents in last night's Battle Royal, including her two opponents here tonight, Cassie Maverick and Oren Kitty Quinn Bell. Of course, coming off that crushing loss in the Vixens title match against Fury, but later... Uh, I'll say later on today. Earlier tonight, before the show started, Kitty actually had an interview um, detailing what went on uh, after Absolution went off the air. Kitty Quinn Bell and Fury getting into a hellacious fight after Kitty Quinn Bell requested a rematch in two weeks' time at Purgatory, wanted one more shot to title. Fury came on out and said, under one condition, hell and a cell, but saying she doesn't want to put her title on the line. This led. Kitty Quinn Bell and the fans to start chanting pussy, pussy, which got Fury absolutely livid. The two went to a huge brawl. Ended up Fury spearing Quinn Bell through the barricade, knocking both Vixens out. And earlier tonight, Kitty Quinn Bell in an interview saying that she's not the one who called Fury a pussy. She was just agreeing with the fans who were chanting that at the uh, Vixens champion. But indeed, guys, two weeks time, it has been made official. Hell in a cell where it all started between the two. Fury versus Kitty Quinn Bell in a rematch title. Not on the line, though, which Kitty Quinn Bell is not too happy about, but still a big opportunity for the Queen of Botchville to defeat the Vixens champion. And the first ever one-on-one -on -one Vixens championship match, by the way. Not the first ever Vixens Hell in a Cell, period, because back at Dark Carnival, that's where we saw Fury win her first Vixens title, remember, by pinning Quinn Bell in the Armageddon Hell in a Cell. As here comes Cassie Maverick. She was in the final three in that Vixens mini Royal Rumble last night. It actually came down to Aura and Divine before the cheeky Japanese girl won. What a battle it was, though. Still absolutely shocked at Divine's performance. And now she has herself a championship shot in the co-main event of Ascendance. The grandest stage of them all. What's up, Tim Batman, everybody? <clears throat> Big night of action, though, here in the fall of Absolution. We do indeed have the start to our... Tornado Tag Team Title Tournament. We'll see Duke Briggs team with his new bodyguard. The newcomer Buzzsaw Jack to take on Extreme Conditions, Eric Thunder and Matt Jefferson. And our main event tonight gonna to be a big collision long awaited between Hayden and X-Gen member Ryan Kent as of course two weeks away the main event of Purgatory will be another Hell in a Cell match nearly third, th I must say 30 years, nearly three years after their first encounter inside the Devil's Playground. Hayden and Sushi X will go at it tonight. We also see the former undisputed champion Randy Borton clash with Justin Sane, the second annual Cyber Invitation winner who will get his shot at the world title in two weeks at Purgatory against the new champion, Brian Novak. And we'll finally find out who heads on to the main event of Ascendance to take on the fourth annual Royal Rumble winner, Kendall Wolf. Yes, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. If you did not see Absolution's conclusion, Kendall Wolf returning after nearly eight months out of action. Hadn't seen him since last year's Ascendance. Coming back to eliminate Duo in the final two and win the whole damn thing. As here comes Kitty Quinn Bell. Obviously bruised and battered after that brawl with Fury. But she ain't back now, so she's going to come out here and beat these two expletive deletes asses. I said expletive deletes and asses. These bitches asses. You know, this isn't a Christian family show anymore. 
And there you see, still our Anarchy champion, Jacob Ziegler, not in action tonight, just accompanying his best gal, defeating Parker, the quickness, after Parker uh, made a fatal mistake, went for a suicide dive, landed hard on the outside, Ziegler capitalized to win. And here she comes, the fans are on their feet, the cheeky Japanese girl, America's sweetheart divine has her spot in the co-main event of Ascendance, ladies and gentlemen, eliminating all five of her opponents last night. <clears throat> Even beat out Hayden for most eliminations. Hayden got four eliminations in last night's uh, Superstar Royal Rumble. Most eliminations in that match has the most eliminations of all time now to Hayden at 11, but Divine beat them out last night with five of her own. Ooh, tonight I'm also very excited to see the singles return, the fusion return of Billy, corporate Billy, cousin Billy, now Billy Weaver back at it again. He'll be taking on Abbott Bast. We'll also see Bob Luger collide with light heavyweight champion Shanaz Andoni in Luger's fusion debut. But here we go, it's time for some Vixen's action. We got Cassie and Aura taking on Kitty Quinbell and Jada Divine Ziegler in their corner. Will he play a part in this? We're going to find out right now as the ref rings the bell and Quinn right out of the gate with a signally backbreaker showing off some strength and immediately going to tag in Jade. Oh no, going to the second turn ball. I was going to say, what? Goes for a senton, backfires the cowgirl. Not happy about the conclusion of last night's Vixen's mini run. We heard from her earlier tonight before the show started. She was with her, her NXT friend, <coughs> Sultry Susanna. And Susanna was getting in her head, filling it with, with lies and deceits. Poisoning Cassie Maverick, the once fan favorite, beloved by millions. Now she's just a dirty heel. She goes to work on Kitty Quinn Bell. A lot of pride on the line in this tag team encounter, but only two of these competitors will end up getting what they came for. The win. Troy Myers does not have a match on tonight's Fusion. He might have one on the live event, Tomcat. <clears throat> the cowgirl sent to the ring apron. Kitty Quinbell just staring at her. Cannot wait. Two weeks time. Kitty Quinbell and Fury inside of hell and a cell. Oh, there's Ziegler already poking his nose into this match. Distracting Cassie Maverick. We always see Ziegler interfere in Quinn's matches, but Quinn never interferes in Ziegler. She's a good gal. Ziegler's that dirty heel, though. And there's the tag. tag to Jade Divine now. Oh, right to the gut. This is dangerous. <clears throat> oh, yeah, me too. Tonight we also see another debut. Jimmy Starr, who shocked it, sent the internet into a buzz last night when he entered at number 10 in the Royal Rumble. Went, actually went uh, quite a while, lasted in there a bit before being eliminated. Uh -oh. But Jimmy Starr, huge independent superstar, signed to CMV, makes his debut tonight against Johnny Vegas. Vegas, first time we're seeing him on Fusion in quite a while as well. Big opportunity for him. <clears throat> now we get a big time single knee backbreaker to Cassie, who's got to make that tag to Aura. She's not doing so well right now. And folks, we <clears throat> learned earlier tonight that in Cole Savage's absence as Fusion and Genesis general manager, we have been graced with an anonymous general manager who has already made his uh, presence felt here. Now I'll get to that later on tonight, but the uh, new anonymous Fusion and Genesis general manager saying he will reveal himself in two weeks' time at Purgatory. We're going to see who exactly it is, but for these next two weeks, I've got this computer set up next to me. It's on It's on a podium. If he has anything to say important, it'll go off, and I'll get up. <clears throat> Can I, may I have your attention, please? And I'll let it be known what the general manager has to say as we get a double leg takedown here from Aura. The final two in that Vixen's Battle Royal last night. Man, was Aura upset after the match is over backstage, trashing the catering area, throwing supply boxes, and attacking backstage crew. She was livid, not happy at the result. Really thought she was going to punch her ticket to the co-main event of Ascendance. <clears throat> oh, I haven't seen that counter yet. That was beautiful. Going for a butterfly uh, backbreaker, I think, was Aura. But 
And Devine rejects it with a Hurricane Rana. This is going to need some serious medical attention. Big time badge grab slam as the cheeky Japanese girl looks to make the tag to Quinn. High respect shown between Quinn and Jay Devine. Quinn saying she's so happy to be teaming with the cheeky Japanese girl tonight. I hope they work well together to take down these uh, vicious, dirty heels, Aura and Maverick. <clears throat> Ooh, European uppercut. Going to stagger Aura. Quinn Bell looking to capitalize. Quinn definitely needs this momentum after coming off that loss against Fury last night. Again, championship won't be on the line at Purgatory, Hell in a Cell, but Quinn Bell... Although she's very upset about that, saying Fury's not a fighting champion. She's a pussy, but not going to let that opportunity pass her by to get a pinfall victory as she has in the past over the Urban Warrior. Already going to get out of that headlock there. I wouldn't want to get out of that headlock, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Tag to Maverick now. The cowgirl looking to turn the tides for her team. It's been largely in control of Quinn and Divine throughout. And what do we got here now? <coughs> Ooh, Brooklyn Bridge, hey. Shout out to Chet Taylor, I know Jen hates that. Tag to Divine now, frequent tags between these two, working well together, what's up Dynamic? Snap suplex by the cheeky Japanese girl, taking Cassie down right away. Now we're gonna get that standing corkscrew, oh no, the shooting star press instead, playing Trixies. <coughs> 2,500 MBPS is what my stream quality is on there, Tom. I've said it in the past, it might be uh, breaking up for you if you have crappy internet. So, sorry about that. Got to get that high quality though, you feel me? Who <laughs> say? This is the first match dynamic. Oh, <laughs> wayside slam by Divine. Shout out to the Moo Moo Man. Randy Borton, who might... Uh... <laughs> Wait a minute! Divine Arrow! Out of nowhere! One! Two, three, and Jay Devine gets the win as Aura lets the pin blatantly happen. Just stood there, didn't even try to break it up. Oh, I think Aura's still livid about last night. Doesn't care about getting the win here. Letting Cassie Maverick get pinned blatantly. Not even lifting a finger to try and stop it. As Quinn Bell and Jay Devine with a huge victory here tonight to kick off Fusion. What a roll Divine is on and Fury had best look out because we got a new Divine back at homecoming. It was so close. Jade time and time again had the match won. Main event or co-main event I should say of Ascendance Fury. Jade Divine one more time for the title. Will it finally be Divine's night? I mean that was Brooklyn Bridge, Jen. She just didn't go into the pin. Please understand. And there's the finish. You see Aura get into the ring and then just stand and stare as the pinfall goes down. Didn't even lift a finger to try and stop the count from happening. And you saw Kitty Quimbell going crazy. And oh, Ziegler's got that. Ziegler's got that Vixen uh, w winning animation here. Oh, look at those hips though. Them hips don't lie, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Woo! Man. Them hips do not lie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> As the next matchup comes our way. And, oh, wait a minute. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting an alert right now from the anonymous general manager of Fusion and Genesis. May I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Let me just <clears throat> clear my throat real quick. As the anonymous general manager says, Fury... You were right in saying that Quinn has absolutely no authority to demand anything, let alone a championship match, but you were out of line as well, thinking that you can decide when the title is or is not defended. So next week on Monday Night Fusion, Quinn Bell will be in singles action against an opponent hand-picked by Fury. And if Quinn Kel Quinn Kel Quinn Kel if Quinn Bell can defeat said opponent, then the championship will be on the line at Purgatory. But if the Queen of Botchville fails, then it will remain a non-title match. What an announcement by the anonymous general manager of Monday Night Fusion. Ladies and gentlemen, next week on Fusion, Quinn Bell will be in singles action against a, an opponent handpicked 
by Fury. And if Quinn Bell can beat said opponent, she will get one last shot at the Vixen's title inside Hell in a Cell at Purgatory. What an announcement. Another huge shocker by the anonymous general manager to Monday Night Fusion and Saturday Night Genesis. As we get ready for a big time debut up next here on Monday Night Fusion, I am so excited. I'm excited for this man as well. I'm a big Johnny Vegas fan. Haven't seen him on Fusion in quite some time. Huge opportunity for him. Wasn't in the Rumble last night. Maybe feel shafted that a newcomer like Star and an indie sweetheart was given that opportunity, but he wasn't. And here's a tweet from Aura, now backstage. She says, that stripper deserved to get pinned in that match as it meant nothing to me. I want a shot at the Vixen's Championship. You think I care about a stupid little tag match? Well, I think Cass is going to have something to say about that. Aura better watch her back. <clears throat> as here comes Vegas, going to take on the indie darling, Jimmy Starr. I mean, those hips don't lie, Alvis. Those hips don't lie. <clears throat> and as I said earlier, the uh, anonymous general manager before the show started already made his presence felt as Markitel came out here. Remember, he said that if he lost the Rumble, he'd be retiring, but the Big Red Monster tried to come out here and say, no, 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 I want one more match, one more match at Purgatory, but the anonymous GM saying, there's a new era coming, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not going to allow people to go back on their words, so Markitel, you are indeed fired. This anonymous GM not playing around, already using his authority. <clears throat> I will never forget that. And here he comes, Jimmy Starr, ladies and gentlemen, making his fusion debut. This man made quite a name for himself on the independent circuit, competing in various promotions around the world. And now he's made his way to the biggest of them all, CMV. <laughs> Maybe I uh, go ask him if they're edible, Batman. Maybe they are. You never know. He might get hungry halfway through the match. Strutting his way down the ramp and into the ring, though. <clears throat> Vegas, Jimmy Starr, one on one to continue Monday Night Fusion as we get a tweet from Ryan Kent, who says, I'm going to beat the crap out of that prick Hayden and show why I'm the best in the business. Hashtag <clears throat> fact as Jimmy Starr brings Johnny Vegas into the corner there. Will we see a clean break? No, Vegas not taking it easy on the youngster. Fighting from a position with that cheap shot there. Our main event tonight, of course, we'll see Hayden go toe-to-toe -to -toe with X-Gen representative Ryan Kent. A long-awaited match. Cannot wait for that later on tonight. As Hayden gets prepared for the main event of Purgatory, will he would take on Sushi X inside Hell in a Cell. Once again, Collar and Elbow taken to the corner. Vegas going to take another cheap shot. Jimmy Starr maybe pay him back. No, it's Vegas who takes another cheap shot. Back to the Collar and Elbow. Waist lock cinched in by Vegas. Trying to keep him locked in. Not letting him go. Shaking around now to get the wrestling slam into a side headlock. Ooh, and a punch right to the face. Star coming up to his feet. Again, absolutely sent the internet into a, a buzz last night when making his debut in the Royal Rumble. Make a further impact here tonight by beating Johnny Vegas. Certainly a, a great competitor Vegas. Been here a while now. About five months Vegas has been around here in CMB. What's that leg doing though? Never really had his chance to shine. Been on Genesis a lot. Picked up a few wins in his past couple of matches. Irish Whip going to put Vegas in the corner from behind. Double axe handle by Star. And now we're going to get a Snake Eyes, it's looking like. Bam! Right down onto the turnbuckle. Vegas going to follow that up. What's he going to go for? I should say Star's going to follow it up. No, he's not, though. Vegas counters European uppercut. <clears throat> Uh, here's a response from Hayden who says, best in the business? Tell me how it feels to be a transitional champion in every single one of your reigns. 
sending out the fire as Hayden, as always, on that Twitter game. Hayden not winning a second Royal Rumble last night, not going to be main eventing his third straight ascendance, but getting four eliminations, the most in last night's fourth annual Rumble. Could see just insane main event his second consecutive ascendance though if he can get past Brian Novak at Purgatory in two weeks time see who will take on Kendall Wolf the show of shows Randy Borton the former champion feeling shafted going to try to pick up a win over Sane later on tonight in our co-main event see what could have been had Borton retained last night what's up J-Rod Irish whip countered by Star puts him in the corner Oh, a nice single knee face breaker. Sending Star to another dimension. Now is he going for a seated position? <clears throat> Doing a rain dance here. Punches him right in the dick. <clears throat> and Star with another cravat suplex. And here's a tweet from Abbott Bass, who's in action later on tonight. He says, I am the final survivor of an unexpected explosion destroying the Minutemen. I will never forget. And Abbott Bass, of course, referring to Rex Carter's antics last night. Wait a minute, Vegas, with that pinpoint knee drop, Rex Carter turning his back on his friends and stablemates last night, destroying all of the Minutemen. And if you remember the website, you saw that exclusive who was released, Alexander Bannon. Slick B and Tyson Newman all released Abbott Bass's All That Remains of the Minutemen. And he'll be making his fusion, I believe it's also Abbott's fusion debut tonight as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the returning Billy Weaver. But uh, indeed some sad news. Slick B has passed away, ladies and gentlemen, found dead in his hotel room after being released seemingly from an overdose. Rest in peace, Slick B. Gone and probably forgotten, though, in a matter of time. As Jimmy Starr going to lean Vegas up against the ropes now. What is the Indy Darling going for? Oh, a stomp down onto the chest using the ropes to spring himself up. Oh, up top goes Starr. What is he looking for here? Going to take the risk. Will it pay off? Vegas, Vegas, wait a minute. Johnny Vegas catching him with a kick to the gut. And a pedigree. A pedigree by Johnny Vegas. Oh, it might be a rope break though. Ref doesn't see it, I guess. That should be a rope break. Oh, Jimmy Starr kicking out on his own anyhow. Great match here, but if you missed any of the matches from this week, Ziegler to comes running down to beat up Johnny Vegas. The Had them flashbacks when Ziegler made his debut against Vegas way back when, got his finishers countered like four times. <clears throat> Jimmy Starr still standing. Looks like Vegas was trying to tear apart the announce table. Maybe try to teach the youngster a lesson. Welcome him to Fusion with pizzazz, put him through the table, mess up my Mountain Dew. But Jimmy Starr is still fighting, he's not going down just yet. Count of three, big time belly to belly on the outside though by Vegas, as he now grabs Starr by those beautiful locks. We're gonna get a gut run, suplex on the outs, deal with some extra damage, referee to count of four right now. Count of five. <clears throat> Vegas not looking for that count out victory, just breaking the count. Wants to inflict some more damage on Jimmy here. And here's a tweet from Kitty Quinn Bell. She says, Woo, I just heard the news. Next week, my chance to once again become number one contender. Even though I don't know who I'm facing, the Queen of Botchwa will be ready. Purgatory, Kitty versus Fury, Hell in a Cell for the Vixens title. So Kitty Quinn Bell is seeming confident no matter who Fury chooses to be her opponent next week. As this time, Vegas is going to try to take that count out. Victory Star sleeping on his feet. Ref at a count at six. Vegas takes a second to taunt. Might come back to bite him, though. Now Jimmy's taking a second to taunt, though. Rip. Just taunting at each other. Elbow out of the corner, catching Johnny. Vegas off guard. Goes for that leaping forearm smash. Vegas shuts him down, though. And what do we got here? Butterfly suplex. Nearly launching him out of the ring. Vegas is all over Jimmy Starr here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Starr right back to his feet, though. Playing possum. Sweeps Johnny Vegas' legs. Lifts him to his feet. What's he going to go for here? High angle dick grab slam. That's how you know he's a great wrestler. He's going to do good here in CMV. <clears throat> what is this by Jimmy now? Super kick. No, Vegas saw it coming. Ducks out of the way. And an elbow stamp. 
catching star right on the noggin. That might be it. Jimmy could be done for one, two. No, Jimmy Star fighting out of it, going for that Troy Voodoo-esque super kick, but it backfired. Johnny luring him in. Star still fighting though, showing some heart here tonight, even though he's been dominated. <clears throat> what do we got here now? That classic head scissors, one elbow, bam to the temple. Star back in control. Can he keep it up though? A third Kravat suplex. Love some Kravats though. Bloody Justice was not fired. Shoots the half to Star in a desperation effort to get the quick victory here. Look for the upset, but no. Only a two count. Certainly a lot of people were released following Absolution last night, saying goodbye to the likes of Zach Payne, Mark Intel, of course, and Ringo Max, along with the Mexican militia. They didn't stay very long, and all the Minutemen members we went over earlier. A lot of young blood like Jimmy Starr here tonight, though. He goes for a moonsault off the second turnbuckle. Now in control. That stamina is coming back to bite him, though. Goes for the pin, hooks the leg. One, two, but only a two count. Jimmy Starr looking at the referee, hands on his head, thought that was going to be it. <clears throat> Vegas still fighting, though. The Will we see a Vegas sure bomb, perhaps? Damn! Just crumbling all of Jimmy Starr's weight underneath him. Planting him face first on the canvas. Now into the corner goes Starr. What is Vegas looking for here? Going to go for his own moonsault, maybe? Ah, oh, that stalling fish drop vintage here. I think I saw a tooth go flying as well. Uh-oh, Vegas bomb inbound. Not looking to put over that young talent. Johnny Vegas realizes what an opportunity this is for him. First time on Fusion in a while. Going for that Vegas bomb, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think Jimmy Starr is going to be getting up from that one as Vegas goes right into the pin. One, two, three, and Johnny Vegas with the victory. Johnny in Vegas ain't putting over that young talent, no how, no way. He's still gonna get himself recognized. What a match and what a debut for Star, not going the way he would have wanted it to as Vegas gets the victory. <laughs> Echo just said it one time and it's stuck, it's a bomb. It's just because Johnny Vegas is the bomb. Everything he does is a bomb. Look at this catching pedigree. Jacob Ziegler snarling backstage. Not enough to put down Star. There should have been a rope break. Looks like Jimmy Star broke his wrist. Jimmy Star putting up one a hell of a fight. Did not back down. Kept coming and coming and coming, but. Vegas just simply would not let it be. And here's the finish. The Vegas bomb puts the lights out for Jimmy Starr. You saw his head just smack off the canvas. One, two, three. Johnny Vegas taking full advantage of this fusion match, getting the win on a little bit of a winning streak now is Vegas. Impressive, putting down the indie darling at Jimmy Starr. The uh, marks there aren't going to be too happy about that, but. Up next, we see another fusion debut in the form of Bob Luger, the cardio maniac. <coughs> <coughs> oh, man, I think I'm getting sick. Aren't I always sick? <laughs> and the uh, second generation superstar who entered at number one in the Rumble last night didn't last very long. Got chucked over the top rope by Zach Cage almost immediately. But tonight he has a big opportunity to defeat the reigning light heavyweight champion Shanaz Andoni who has been scheduled now as official that he will defend his belt in two weeks time at Purgatory against the former champion Andrew Briggs and his rival Christopher Anna what is going to be a chaotic triple threat for sure. 
Still to come tonight, Billy Weaver makes his fusion return, taking on Abbott Bass. Randy Borton and Justin Singh go at it. And in our main event, it will be Hayden toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ryan Kent. How about this news next week, guys, that T and Lee will be getting their rematch for the World Tag Team Championship against Fast and Furious. Of course, new champions crown. What an upset it was. The, the arena was absolutely dead side to take off my headset for a second. I was in utter shock, but a poll on the website asked whether or not you guys think T and Lee will win back their titles. And <clears throat> Excuse me. Fuck. Seven people voted that yes. Last night was a fluke and that T and Lee will become three-time tag team champions while 11 people voted that no, T and Lee's time in the sun is done and Fast and Furious will reign supreme. Next week, T and Lee against Fast and Furious for the tag team titles as Luger jogs his way down the ramp and into the ring. And here's a, a, a teat. Here's a tweet from Kitty Quinbell targeted at Aura. And she says, oh, I hope it's you I face too, but I wouldn't worry about my chances seeing as you blew your chance in the mini rumble. So Aura hoping that Fury chooses her to face Quinbell and Quinbell saying, bring it on. I'd love for that to happen. Luger getting ready for this big opportunity in his fusion debut against the light heavyweight champion, the real number one Bubba and the Punjabi playboy Shanaz Andoni. <clears throat> and oh, wait a minute, guys. I'm getting another alert here from the anonymous general manager of Fusion and Genesis. And if I can have everybody's attention, please. He says, the a new era has arrived here in CMV. And thus, this Saturday on Genesis, a fatal four-way will take place to see who challenges Morgan Jackson for his newly won international championship in two weeks time at Purgatory. And the four contestants are Paul Anderson of the Coalition, former champion Jamari Williams, the rabid Samoan Grid, and the bloody Brit Chris Andrews, ladies and gentlemen. A huge fatal four-way match set into place by the anonymous GM to see who will challenge Morgan Jackson for the international title at Purgatory. This GM is already on top of things, man. Rip Cole Savage. What a huge blockbuster announcement for this Saturday on Genesis, but Fusion continues, ladies and gentlemen. Still so much to get to. Referee rings the bell, and right out of the gate, we got a collar and elbow tie up. That's Luger's got a little bit of a size advantage here over Shanaz. I don't know about strength, though. Shanaz can be impressive at times, shock you. Catch you off guard. He has Bob Luger in an arm lock right now. Trying to take him down to his knees, but Luger ain't having it. There you go. Sweeps him. You heard it right, ladies and gentlemen. A fatal four-way match this Saturday on Genesis. Paul Anderson, Jamari Williams, Grid, and Chris Andrews to see who challenges Jackson for the international title at Purgatory. <clears throat> it's Twitch. Dang so Irish whip. Uh, vintage Shanaz with that inverted atomic drop. And here is a tweet from Demon Briggs, a.k.a. Andrew. He says, watch your back if you want to make it to Purgatory at Christopher Ann. Let's hope you stay at home tonight. Briggs trying to get into his opponent's heads. Chris Frannad, he's not booked tonight. I don't believe he is here, but Shanaz, who took the belt from Andrew, the top of last month, episode 200 of CMB, looking to gain some momentum. Shanaz actually getting one elimination in the Rumble last night, and that came against Ziegler, tossing the Anarchy Champion out of the ring, prompting many to believe that Shanaz has put the light heavyweight title above the Anarchy Championship, at least. <clears throat> That's what some uh, superstars backstage think. Uh, to the top goes Shanaz as we get a tweet from Cass Lefebvre who says, Good to see more action from the Anon GM than Cole Savage. Lazy old men get nothing done. Regardless, if there was any question in anyone's mind, me and Young and Cooper ain't happening. Ain't got the time. Ha. Uh, I don't really get the time pun. Maybe that has to do with the whole... Uh, the whole, whatchamacallit, time machine conundrum that went on earlier tonight 
between she quantum and sim i don't even want to get into not too sure what happened scarred me for life but here's a tweet from uh morgan jackson who says fools be coming for my gold all these peeps getting played at purgatory so jackson who defeated jamari williams last night at absolution doesn't seem too bothered uh, whoever comes his way for the international title wins that four-way on Genesis. Meanwhile, Castle Fave saying she's not accepting Megan Cooper's challenge to a match at Purgatory. Guess we'll have to wait and see if that develops further as Cole Savage keeps pressing old Mama Lefebvre to have that match. <laughs> Shanaz going for a drop kick. Luger moves out of the way, though. Oh, and a nice backbreaker by Luger. Up next, the former two-time light heavyweight champion. First ever two-time light heavyweight champ. Of course, Shanaz now is two-time as well. But Billy Weaver returns to singles action on Fusion, taking on Abbott Bass, collision of light heavyweights. A lot of new signings and releases, of course, that spring cleaning. Oh, well, I don't know what happened there. Shanaz hit his ass off the top turnbuckle. Went for a low blow, I think, or something to Luger. <clears throat> I do not hate you, Tomcat. I love you. But uh, many new signings. Put on to Fusion and Genesis by the new anonymous general manager. We'll be seeing actually a couple of debuts, I've been told, on this week's live event. Hooks the leg to Shanaz after that vintage enziguri of his, but only a two count. As Shanaz puts his hands on his head. Can't believe they didn't get the job done. Luger, the son of Lex Luger, though, has that fighting spirit deep down within him. What do we got here? Capture suplex out of the corner. Or a T-bone suplex, as uh, Michael Cole just said there. Don't think so. Uh, now we're going to get a barrage of elbow drops. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a tenth one incoming. Ten as he flicks the sweat from his hair down onto Shanaz's face. Goes for the pin now. No, he is not, Tomcat. Sure, he's not fired. But only a two count after them heart-stopping elbow drops. Now it's Luger who's dumbfounded as to how he didn't get the three count there. Oh, oh, Bob Luger out of nowhere gets caught with Shanaz's heel kick. One, two. Oh, man, how did Bob Luger kick out of that? You can just tell by looking in his eyes. He has no idea where he is. Just instinct kicking into play there. You told me not. You told me to take it off as his finisher and make it his signature, Batman. It was his finisher before. This is his sig now. Oh, Shnaz. Now what's this bulldog using the ropes to bounce himself off uh, towards the inside of the ring there. Has Luger right where he wants him. And now going for a page at a Christopher Ann's book with that shining wizard. Greg Rariot. Oh, now we got that elbow takedown. Planting him in the chest, going for a pin yet again, but only a two count for Shanaz. The light heavyweight champion, the real number one Bubba. Trying desperately to put this match to an end. Conserve his energy for Purgatory. Luger just went for his finisher, I think. I'm not too sure. If he did, that spells bad news for him. Ooh, what a jawbreaker. Sends Zandoni flying back. And now Luger just showing off his muscles, scaring Shanaz off. <laughs> Shanaz got scared at the muscles. He can't handle it. Shanaz isn't a very muscular man. He gets jealous when other guys show off their muscles. Luger going for his comeback. Double forearm smash. Another double forearm smash into an Oklahoma stampede. The son of Lex Luger is rolling now. Can he put down the light heavyweight champion, though? Oh, and here it comes. Shades of his poppy with that torture rack. Will Shanaz be the first man in season three to submit? The pain might be enough to get the pin, though, even if he doesn't. Let Shanaz go right into the pin, hooks the leg. One, two, just a two count. <clears throat> we won't have to wait long, ladies and gentlemen, to find out exactly who the anonymous general manager is. He'll be revealed at Purgatory as Luke goes for his finisher yet again. <clears throat> Shanaz a little bit quicker on the draw though. Luger back into the driver's seat. Has that. <clears throat> that looks nasty. No kidding. I bet 
Yeah, you probably got really bad internet there, Tomcat. It's, it's not lagging for you. You're probably buffering. Indeed, do have the referee's five count. Does the referee even count in the corner? I don't think he does. They used to have that in like 2008 and 2009 and stuff I knew, but I don't think they had that in there anymore. As Luger going to put Shanaz up on the top rope. Tucks his legs outside of the rank. What does he bring him? Tower of London. That cutter from the top rope. <sighs> Might spell the end for the real number one Bubba. Just a two count. What a match this has been thus far. Great fusion debut, win or lose for Bob Luger, but definitely a win. Would be a uh, big one for the second generation superstar who is a, I don't know, does Bob Luger qualify as light heavyweight? I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. He's close, definitely. He's got, the, he's got the look of a light heavyweight at least. I don't know if he qualifies though. Might be a little bit too heavy as he takes a second to uh, regain some stamina. The down Shanaz trying to fight his way back. Misses that heel kick. Luger going to try to capitalize. Shanaz to his feet, though. Catches him with the elbow to the midsection. Oh, another backbreaker, though. Took it out of Luger. Down on one knee. Stamina drained. Oh, size him up. What is Luger looking for? Trying to end this matchup. <clears throat> what do we got here? A tossing butterfly suplex nearly threw him out of the ring there. And Shanaz might be done for, ladies and gentlemen. Drags him away from the ropes. Lateral press doesn't even hook the legs. A little bit cocky here is Luger, but he gets the win. Indeed, Bob Luger with a classic maneuver there and the tossing a butterfly suplex gets him a big time win over the reigning light heavyweight champion. What a match though, back and forth throughout. Bob Luger making an impact in his fusion debut. <laughs> I don't know if Luger even qualifies as light heavyweight, to be honest. I don't think he is. I think he's a couple pounds over the limit. Big win, though, for Luger, without a doubt. There's a barrage of elbow drops there early on. And here's the finish, Bob Luger with this classic maneuver, a tossing butterfly suplex, the Luger plex he likes to call it, I'm being told. Gets him the three count. <laughs> Bob Luger is the yoga. What a win for Luger and its fusion debut over Shanaz and Doni. Not great for the light heavyweight champion heading into his title defense, though, at Purgatory against former champ Andrew Briggs and rival Christopher Ann. As up next, the action continues with the return of Billy Weaver, ladies and gentlemen, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Abbott Bass. <clears throat> Still to come tonight, but Begin the Tornado Tag Team title tournament. Of course, we know that Quantum, who placed in second in the Cyborg Invitational, got that tag team title shot. He and his chosen partner, Ryan Kent of X-Gen, uh, have been given a free pass straight to the finals at Purgatory. So now the other half of the brackets will take place over these next couple of weeks. Tonight, we see Duke Briggs and his new bodyguard, the... <clears throat> uh, one of the latest signees to CMB, Buzzsaw Jack are going to be taking on extreme conditions. Of course, Andrew Briggs is not going to be able to compete in the tournament because he's getting that light heavyweight title shot, so Duke had to find a replacement. See something in Buzzsaw Jack, I suppose. Bring him into the Briggs family. Can't wait for that one, though. All the uh, tournament matches will be Tornado Tag Anarchy Rules. And the finals at Purgatory will be Tornado Tag Elimination for the Tornado Tag titles. I cannot wait. And here we get a tweet from Duke. 
Speaking of, he says, Eliminate Hayden and Sushi X in the Royal Rumble. Step two, defeat these jabronis extreme conditions here tonight. Step three, destroy X-Gen for those Tornado Tag titles. Duke, indeed, what a performance by him last night. Wait a minute, Nick Blake! Nick Blake assaulting Billy Weaver as he's making his entrance for this fusion match against Abbott Bass and Nick Blake, a former unmatched television champion, ladies and gentlemen, returning in the fourth annual Royal Rumble match last night. Entered at number 29, I believe. Didn't last very long, was eliminated, but immediately got into a, 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 a mix of bad words with Billy Weaver post-show. The two exchanging heated words in separate interviews and Nick Blake making his fusion debut here tonight by attacking Billy Weaver from behind as he's making his entrance. And Abbott Bass has no problem apparently taking advantage. He's pissed off about what happened last night. Rex Carter turning his back on the Minutemen, destroying all of them, injuring Tyson Newman and, and Alexander Ben and Slick B. Rest in peace, of course. But Billy, we were trying to fight back despite that pre-match assault by Nick Blake. Didn't seem to want to wait around for his, uh, to, to be booked for his debut here. Making an impact just 24 hours after returning. And this match hasn't even officially started, ladies and gentlemen. The bell hasn't even rung yet. Both men have got to get into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Blake came, attacked Billy, and then left. Making a statement. And here's a tweet from Eric Thunder responding to Duke saying, you got some balls for calling us jabronis, Duke. How about you get your own material? I'm personally going to enjoy ramming a kendo stick up your ass. So now we got some back and forth between the Briggs family in extreme conditions here. This fight's being taken up the so ramp, guys. The like say, What's up, Jack? Abbott Bass, big opportunity for him. This is his fusion debut as well. A lot of fusion debuts tonight. A single star, no longer backed up by his Minutemen pals. Certainly going to seek retribution against Rex Carter, who earlier tonight in an interview said... The Minutemen are no more, but Rex Carter is forever. As he gets a nice neck breaker there, does Billy. Former first ever two-time light heavyweight champion. Now a half camel clutch digging the knee into the spine. <laughs> is this match going to start, though? Nice wrestling slam by Weaver. Onto the steel, too, and an elbow drop to follow it up. Ref should call this off, man. These two don't seem to want to start this match. Billy Weaver taking out his aggressions towards uh, Nick Blake out on Abbott. And Abbott taking his aggressions you know, on Rex Carter out on Billy here. That's beating the crap out of each other. Oh, my God, you're tossing him the wrong way. <laughs> Billy's trying to get this match started, <clears throat> but he hasn't been here in a while. After being suspended by Triple H, oh dang, Fisherman Suplex taking both men out. Suspended by Triple H, Billy was gone for about three months before absolutely shaking the arena last night with his return. Oh, a crack to the jaw. What's up, Brett? What do we got here? Oh, bow tie back, Rigger digs the knee into the kidneys, bending the body in a way it simply should not. Oh, what a clothesline by Bass, though. Abbott Bass, who can forget some weeks back with quite possibly one of the biggest upsets in CMB history, defeating Xander Slate in the Cyborg Invitational. Another clothesline. As we get a tweet from Nick Blake here, he says, Nick Blake may have hit William too hard. This match is supposed to happen inside the ring. <coughs> Nick Blake calling him William. William Weaver. Maybe he did hit him too hard, though. These two just don't seem to want to start this match. They are beating the shit out of each other, though. This is the fourth match of the evening there, Brett. Rams him into the security wall now. Billy. Oh, man. Spine first. 
Jesus, these two are absolutely dismantling. Save it for your rivals, guys. My goodness. There we go. Finally. Well, almost. <laughs> almost got him in the ring. Just lift him up, Billy. Come on. I'm sure both these guys have finishers by now. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> these two are just not up. They're taking the show hostage. The next match is the first round bout in the Tornado Tag Team Tournament. We'll see Duke and Buzzsaw Jack take on Extreme Conditions as Billy tosses Abbott Bass further up the ramp. And the ref can't count him out because the match is not officially started. There we go. Now he's, he's just tossing him everywhere now. He's just having some fun as Weaver. Oh, there you go. Now he's tossing him the right way. There you go. <clears throat> You're so close, Billy. Come on. Abbott is just limp at this point. There we go. Yeah! Woo! Billy Weaver finally getting Abbott into the ring. And now a boot to the temple. Despite the attack by Nick Flick, referee finally rings the bell. This match has started after 10 minutes of these two fighting on the outside. And Billy right for a pin. One. Two. Just a two count, though. These two are already so tired. Gas tanks on empty, bruised and all. Oh, we're going to get here. Those rapid fire back elbows, I think, maybe. No, nah, Abbott shuts that down. Abbott Bass with that leaping lariat of his. That's what he beat Xander Slate with. Will he take down Billy Weaver now? Shoots the half. One, two, three. Yes, he does. Abbott Bass with the victory thanks to an assist by Nick Blake and the former Minutemen member. Wait a minute, here comes Blake again out on the ramp. Taken in, costing Billy Weaver that match. Nick Blake with a smile on his face. Billy Weaver saying, you want some? Come get some. And tensions grow as the rivalry between enemies Nick Blake and Billy Weaver continues. Certainly, Nick Blake just costing Billy Weaver his return to Monday Night Fusion, and Abbott Bass has two stacked rockets and an upwards arrow. He's doing good, man. Abbott on a roll. <clears throat> Indeed, Billy saying, bring it the hell on, man. I want you right here, right now. But Nick Blake atop the stage with a smirk on his face saying, eventually, eventually, you wait. It might have been, Topher. It might have been. <laughs> There's been a couple of really short matches throughout CMB, though, so I'm not sure. Certainly one of them, though. <clears throat> and here we go. Up next, folks, our first round matchup in the Tornado Tag Team Tournament. Duke Briggs with the absence of his brother, Andrew, who's going for the light heavyweight title at Purgatory. Duke finding himself a suitable replacement in the form of newcomer, Buzz saw Jack see something in Jack, I guess, who, who's only had a handful of matches thus far here in his career, coming off a victory in a four-way a few weeks back at a live event. But uh, they take on extreme conditions here tonight. Newly formed tag team of childhood, childhood pals, Eric Thunder and Matt Jefferson, who made their debut as a tag team last week on Genesis, suffering a defeat at the hands of the Fast and the Furious. Of course, this Saturday on Genesis, our other first-round match will take place, the Republic Going toe to toe with four in affairs, and next week on Fusion, the finals will uh, come to a conclusion. See who takes on Ryan Kent and Quantum of X Gen at Purgatory to crown the first ever Tornado Tag Team Champions. <clears throat> yeah, there's two more matches after this dynamic. We've got the Moo Moo Man, Randy Borton in action after losing his title. Going to try to uh, get a big win over Justin Sane, the second annual Cyborg Invitational winner who's getting his shot at the world title come Purgatory, challenging the new champ, Brian Novak. And then the main event, Hayden, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ryan Kent. You might be in a live event there, Vlad. I don't book the uh, live events prior. I book them once we get there, my friend. Big Duke Bricks, what a 
Big Duke Briggs. <clears throat> Big Duke Briggs. What a performance by this man in last night's Rumble, eliminating two huge names in the form of Hayden and Sue Shex, the two men who will be made eventing purgatory in two weeks' time inside a Hell in a Cell. Duke also lasted a good while. Certainly one hell of a performance, but was not his night as Kendall Wolf returned after nearly eight months out of action to win the whole damn thing and solidify himself a spot in the main event of this year's Ascendance.